Hey guys, it's Ali and how's it going? I just stumbled across a pretty cool technique in Silent, which is called self-oscillation. And I thought I'd show you guys how to do it and um, maybe one, two, one or two examples what to use it for. And let's actually start with a little background story. So I was looking into how to create some old school t uh, house kick drums because I wasn't really happy with the sample packs I have. And going through them all is always a pain in the ass. And um, I wanted to get in, start in, I wanted to start getting into creating my own kick drums. So the kick drums I was into are very analog sounding, old school kind of drums, and I didn't have any approach on how to create them. So I did some research. And what I learned is that back in the days, many synthesizers didn't have a sine wave to choose for your oscillators and would only have a saw wave and a pulse wave. Um, and since most kick drums are based on a sine wave or something similar, um, it's tough to create a, uh, a kick drum from these waves. But there was a workaround. Since you have a noise floor in your analog gear, you could use a filter and push the drive and the resonance up very high, which would then amplify or push out one of the frequencies of the noise. And if you have one frequency only, that's a sine wave. So that's kind of what self-oscillation does. You have noise, and uh, which is frequencies everywhere, kind of. And then you use the resonance to push one of these frequencies up very high or make one frequency so much louder that it stands out almost like a sine wave. And yes, let's set it up in silent real quick um, and insert a patch. It doesn't matter what oscillator or what waveform you're using here, okay? Um, because the idea behind it, since I guess silent is kind of modeled after analog gear is to be using a noise floor. So you don't really need, you don't have to worry that much about these oscillators and you can actually turn down the volume all the way. What I tried is to put one of these to zero voices and then use it, but that doesn't work. So you have to have at least one oscillator, um, one oscillator with one voice and you can turn down the volume all the way. And now we're gonna put in uh, a high pass filter, which we're gonna push up the um, resonance all the way. And we can also push up this resonance all the way. And now, Okay, let's open span real quick from my plugins. Span, Voxengo span. So we see what's happening. Okay, back to silent. Pushing silent a bit over here. And I'm gonna turn on the volume in, in case it's gonna get very loud. So, yes, let me turn down the resonance. Obviously at this point we don't have any sound. If you see me playing the keyboard down here, nothing happens. When I push up the resonance, you start hearing something, giving it some release. So obviously right now we see it's not a sine wave, it's more like a triangly distorted-ish kind of wave. But why not, you know? We can play maybe a bit around with a different filter, changes the sound, makes it slightly duller. We can see that less harmonics. So this is kind of a way to create a different waveform. Um, no, no, not copy two. Okay. And now, obviously, we're pushing, we have to, well, I don't exactly know what frequency this resonance corresponds to, but, or this cutoff, I mean, but it's somewhere around here. And if we move the cutoff, we're, the resonance pushes a different frequency. So the higher we put the cutoff, the higher the note gets, and the lower we put the cutoff, the lower the notes get. And one thing I should mention is since the cutoff is fixed at this point, it doesn't matter what key we press, it will always play the same note because the resonance is always pushing the same frequency at the point where the cutoff is set right now. And this is where the key track comes in because what the key tracking does is it makes the cutoff follow um, depending on what notes you're playing. So if you're playing a note, uh, a low note, it's gonna put a lower cutoff. And once you move up the keyboard, it's also gonna move the cutoff uh, proportionally, which means now we can play the cutoff like a piano.
or play the filter. But ab more about this in a second. So like I said, I was looking into kit kick drums and we don't need the key tracking for that. Um, usually if you would create Usually if you would create a kick drum, you would use a sine wave and start it at a very high pitch and then make it go down, okay? So use a modulation envelope to modulate the pitch. Since in this case, the cutoff is um, controlling the pitch, we would modulate the cutoff um, kind of like, okay, we're setting up a kick drum. So let's start um, with the amp envelope real quick. Sorry for kind of skipping the cutoff topic for a second, which means let's just decay and give it some release. So now we're getting kind of a stab sound. Okay. And now we can modulate the cutoff and we would have to modulate it in a way, um, well, that makes the cutoff start high, up high and then go low. Just when you use their uh, normal techniques for modulating the filter cutoff. Um, which means we can also, for example, give it some some decay and release. And then we push it. Now we bring the cutoff lower to get a lower note. Something else that I realized doing this is that for some reason, when you get very low cutoff frequencies, um, there's like it starts being delayed a little bit. So maybe you cannot completely see it since I'm pressing a key and then, um, I mean, you cannot really connect the thing, what I'm doing right here with the sound. Maybe there's some delay anyway, but if you notice there being some delay when you play lower notes, just give this one like a very small amount. You can see it in this field when I go over here, very small amount of volume which is then going to make it instant. I don't really know why that is, but it's the way it is. So there we go. Now we're even lower. Maybe using even a second envelope to also modulate the cutoff to give it even a bit more spike. I mean, you can tell, like I haven't figured out a way um, to make a good kick drum with this. Um, I might still try to work it out a bit, but for now, I'm not really using it for kick drums and more for keys and organ sounds because I found them cooler and I haven't figured out a way to make a good kick drum with this technique in here. But this is how I found out, found out about this technique. So I thought maybe bring it up in this context how you can modulate the cutoff in order to modulate the pitch of the self oscillating wave or filter thing that you're creating. So yeah, let's turn off these envelopes over here and go back to the keyboard. Like I said, um, turn up the key tracking in order to have, yeah, in order to um, enable the keyboard playing different sounds and moving along the cutoff. As you already hear, you can make interesting sounds because it's never, it's a bit more organic, I guess, because it's, it's not really the same as using distortion afterwards. And it's not really the same as using a triangle wave and filtering it. Like it's just a different way to work and you can also create cool sounds with that. But what we will have to do to use it really like an instrument is tune it. So let's say I'm playing this G down here. Um, the note we're playing right now. Wow, it's almost, it's really a G. That usually doesn't happen. Okay, so let's put the cutoff at a different point over here. And now I'm still playing a G, but this is playing a C now. It was just pure coincidence that actually happened to be a G in this case. Okay. But I mean, you put the cutoff somewhere, play a note and you realize, ah, oh, okay, this G is not a G. So you have to, will have to fine tune the cutoff in order to tune it to the note that you want. 
and this is what I just did. I mean, you can do it very accurately if you want to press shift and um, yes, um, move the cutoff frequency. And in this case, actually, it usually takes a bit longer. Like I just moved the cutoff and it turned to a G, which once again was a bit lucky, but it, it's not always going to be like that. Um, and then you can also t turn up the polyphony slightly higher and so yeah you can use that like a keyboard and you can even create other sounds with this like you can play around a bit with the drive also okay now the drive turns it off you can give it some warm drive you can the resonance kind of is a gain control in this case and you can also mix it with other sounds so there's a lot you can do and i found that for organs key sounds this kind of stuff um, you can up, come up with pretty cool sounds bit less of this bit more of this sounds like a pretty cool church organ thing and um, yeah you can mess around with that and put some processing on after um, and if we go up into the higher notes you can almost like make like triangles bells okay sorry if that was very high um, cool sounds okay so yeah that's just i think a cool technique to know about in silent um, yeah, I hope it was interesting for you and see you around for some other videos. If you find this kind of stuff cool, feel free to subscribe and um, stick around or just visit my channel here and there. I know that's kind of how I handle my YouTube channels. I don't usually subscribe. I kind of know my go to guys and go back. If you want to do that instead, feel free. And yeah, I hope to